Well, we haven't seen him, as you know, except in snaps, kind of in the car or occasionally in a Zoom or something. So it was wonderful to see him absolutely in life. And um, I thought he, he looked very good. He moved well. He was alert. And after the service, he came out and then um, his car was waiting for him. But he and Queen Camilla went over to greet the crowds. I saw them very, very close to. They were uh, chatting to people, wishing them a happy Easter. Um, the King was asking them if they'd been standing there in the cold, because it was quite a cold day today uh, for um, the whole duration since he, since he went in an hour or so before and shaking hands with people and it was just incredibly encouraging. No member of the royal family has done this before at Easter. Um, I've been going to Easter services in George's Chapel since about 1967, not every year, but normally what would happen is that the Queen and Prince Philip and the royal family would go and have a drink with the Dean and then come out um, up the little steps from the deanery and get into their cars. They were always presented with flowers by some by by people from the castle community. And this time it was a completely different thing altogether because um, the king and queen came out earlier than the other members of the royal family. And then they walked across and it was fascinating to see there was a sort of surge of people who'd been waiting who hadn't quite got it right. And then they realized which direction he was going. And so they all rushed along so that they could be close to where he was coming. So. Um, that was lovely. The fact that he was able to um, relate to the, the crowd was encouraging, I thought. And the other thing which was so great was the enormous number of people who'd come out to see him. I mean, not only the press. I mean, the world's press was gathered, as you can imagine, in force. But um, there were a huge number of well-wishers who'd come, um, you know, keen to see him and keen to be reassured that he was doing well. Certainly, I, I would come away uh, greatly, greatly encouraged by what I saw this morning and uh, very much cheered by it. And, uh, and yeah, he, he looked happy as well, which yeah, is a good thing when you're going through all the things he's been going through recently. It was a cold day. People were prepared to wait uh, out in the cold. They didn't know that he was going to come across and do a walkabout. That was not uh, announced to them. Um, so uh, there was a very nice surprise they got. I mean, they were just hoping to see him come out and get into his car and drive home for lunch. So they got an added bonus. So that was very good indeed. I think I read somewhere that he was going to have a bit of a break, maybe go up to um, Scotland or up to Sandringham and things, because, of course, uh, Queen Camilla has been working extremely hard on his behalf. She has been the, the public face of the monarchy uh, all this time. Um, now, obviously, for him to come to um, morning service and then come out and greet the crowds for, what, five minutes, I suppose, something like that, um, that's a very good start. It doesn't mean to say that he would be ready he wouldn't have been maybe ready to do the Maundy service, which Queen Camilla did for him last Thursday, or some of the more um, more exhausting and tiring engagements. But I think we can see it as a positive step. And I think people will be, you know, greatly, greatly reassured. I'm sure there'll be a lot of interest in his appearance this morning. I think that what was particularly significant, firstly, his first appearance by King Charles uh, since the diagnosis for cancer, um, this uh, on a public engagement, we know that he's been carrying out essential world engagements and he's taken good care that we see photographs of this. But what was, I think, uh, rather inspiring uh, was the fact he looked extremely well and there was a surprise mini walkabout and I think that everyone will have been very relieved at that, relieved to see how well he looked. I mean uh, we know the king is a workaholic and that this is an intensely frustrating time for him but there was little doubt he thoroughly enjoyed communicating um, with the public uh, and, and also doing so in, in a way where, albeit briefly, he could appear spontaneous and seem very at ease. When undergoing treatment for cancer, uh, it apparently is very important that uh, since your risk of infection is rather high, that you keep a certain distance from other people, so it's said. I mean, there were relatively few members of the royal family at the uh, service today, and what what has come across, and we did see a photograph of the King, the community and faith leaders earlier, and I mean, this 
seemed this the photograph had over a dozen people in the room from my I counting. I mean, the point is that there is the chance, obviously, of, of infection is much, much less when you're outside. But nonetheless, it was apparently rather nippy. And um, the king seemed, he seemed at ease. He looked well. He looked actually extremely well. And I felt that in the photograph, which was released with his audio message, message for uh, um, Royal Maundy Thursday, uh, Queen Camilla deputised for him, that he'd looked a tiny bit strained, whereas here he was very spontaneous and I think he was enjoying it enormously. It's obvious that the king wouldn't have done it if he hadn't felt up to it. So what we're obviously looking to see in the future weeks and months is precisely how much he can do, obviously based on medical advice. And obviously we know he's a workaholic. We know he'll do as much as he possibly is allowed to do. What has been thoroughly sensible is the fact that as head of state, I think this was very important that we've seen uh, meetings between him, say, and uh, Prime Minister Rishi Sunak or ambassadors or whatever, and he's taken great care that we see photographs and film and the like, films of him, the Queen and so forth together. Uh, but we've been kept informed and there's no doubt that uh, looking as well as he does, it bodes very well. And I think here in the Commonwealth and the wider world, they'll take heart from that. In the weeks and months to come, and firstly, there are garden parties at Buckingham Palace, then there is the 80th anniversary of D-Day. Now, that's a particularly significant um, anniversary, and he would attend that if he possibly could. Also, obviously, tripping the colour. Now, there's already speculation that he might attend in a carriage. I'm sure that he would attend his um, birthday parade if he was able to do so. And and that would seem unbalanced, perhaps slightly, if I might speculate. There's also Royal Ascot. Uh, he was never a great one for racing, but uh, he and Queen Camilla discovered an enthusiasm for it last year when a uh, horse bred by uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, won. So that, again, is a possibility. But there's no doubt that there will, from time to time there will be opportunities. They can be created and they keep us informed that as to how he's doing from what we can see and what we saw today was somebody who was relaxed who seemed in control who was clearly enjoying it and uh, who looked well